Hi, my name is Sheila Wilson and I'm a registered nurse and today I'm going to interview Patrick Foley and he is a marathon runner. He's been running now for nine years, is that correct? Correct. And your first year, what did you run for? Uh, my first year I actually ran it for myself. Uh -huh. um, it was just kind of an ego thing, I guess. And um, you know, over the years everyone always asked, you know, what are you running for? And I never had an answer and every year I kind of felt bad about that. And so my brother went off to the Marine Corps, and my mother one afternoon went and started packing uh, boxes with troops overseas. And it just clicked. It just clicked, so we contacted the people that ran the organization to listen, I have a number. How can we do, what can we do to help out? So and, that, you're talking about camp pass yeah, with Steve Doyle? With Steve Doyle, yep, yeah, correct. And then um, every year it just continued to, um, you know, grow and grow and grow. And uh, it actually, I'm really, really proud of what we've accomplished. And do you remember how much, uh, now how did you, did you raise money or what, how did you get involved with Camp Pass? Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, we, uh, we raised money. Uh, we did a big benefit fundraiser, um, all sorts of raffle items, silent auction items, um, a DJ and food, and um, it, the event just grew and grew and grew every year, and it's just amazing how, uh, how much it's grown. Now this is J.J. Foley's, the fundraiser? Uh, yeah, the fundraiser at J.J. Foley's. It's my, um, my family's buying restaurant, correct. We, um, I've been there, and I've seen all sorts of, you know, buy raffle tickets, and there's this beautiful young girl right at the door, and she my has sister. a little, your sister, yeah. she has a shoebox, and she greets everybody, and she opens up her shoebox, and money just drops in there, and <laughs> <laughs> you would think that she's like the town crier. She knows everybody in the town. Yeah, and, that's right. Uh, she, she's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And then we buy the tickets, right. the strips of tickets. Yeah. <sighs> Sign our name, put them in. That's right. Uh, it was absolutely, you get some really great gifts to, to raffle off. You do. So now... After eight years, nine, no, this is your nine. This is nine, nine coming up. This is our six year raising money though. So. Six year. So now, next, this year, you're going to run again. Yes. And who are you going to run for? Uh, we, we actually, we switched it up a little bit this year. Mm -hmm. Still, you know, the military mission. Um, but we're raising money for the Fisher House out of Boston. Um, I actually, I got really interested in this organization a few months back when um, the government shutdown was going to happen. And I heard about this group and this organization at camp said, listen, if they want to cut military benefits, we're going to come and we're going to pay. We're going to give them whatever they've lost. And so I did a little research, a little homework on it. And I'm like, man, this is a, this is a pretty awesome organization. So I gave Jen DeLuca a call over there. And I told her what I've done in the past and what me and my family wanted to do going forward. And um, I mean, so, so many times you, people forget forget about these kids right when they get home. I mean, that's, they, they, they do a remarkable job for four years, plus four plus years in some cases, defending us. And then they come home, and yeah, their job might have ended, but our job just began. You know, we gotta make sure that they have the services, and they're put in a position to succeed. And you see the Fisher House, and the help they give veterans and their families every day. Um, and it just puts them in such, you know, it tries to get them on the right road. And that, uh, that really clicked for me, and um, I was really, really happy to get involved. That's, I had never heard of the Fisher House until the fundraiser. Really? I had um, ne never, that never crossed the newspapers for me that I've read, or, so I think this is wonderful. Now, Steve Doyle has moved on to a different organization, is that correct? He's doing um, some, I, I believe so, I'm really not sure. Some equipment to help the vets um, golf, and, um, so that's that. That's another thing that. Right. So now, you you were just running the marathon for yourself, but it was your idea and your mom's idea to come up with sending packages to the troops. Um. Actually, it was our idea. It was our idea to do the fundraiser. That group was already there. Um. Uh -huh. And seeing the awesome stuff that they did. You sit there, and my brother Jeremiah, 107, ton, a ton of friends, a ton of family. You know, no matter what happened, whatever came his way, stuff was going to get sent to him, right? Right. And right. so, but on the flip side, there's a lot of kids over there that are just as tough, just as brave, that are in harm's way every day, that um, that don't have the family to send him that stuff, and they deserve it just as much as he does. 
And so when I saw that organization was sending it, you know, it was it was really important to us to, to not only do a good job, but do do it better than do it better every year. You know, set the bar high. You know, go and try to be the best. So this this is absolutely fabulous. One young man, an idea, and look how far it's gone. You've raised thousands. Uh, yeah. So without thousands. counting this year, um, one hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. And that all um, went to yeah. sending packages to our troops overseas. And, and you get the letters. Um, they send you thank you letters, and you just read them. And it's just like they're thanking us for the letters. It does. They're it, out it there really fighting does. for us to be able to sit here and to record something so that everybody else can. I mean, hear you, what you're sitting done. there, and you're like, okay, like uh, you got shot at, and you're thanking me for uh, a bag of chips that's in there yeah. in Sports okay. Illustrated. You know, it's right, right. I've I've been there. Now, what about Boston Strong? What, what do you think about that? How love is it. That? Yeah. I love it. It's um, um, I, I've been talking to a few people about it, and to think back last year, um, how right after the bombings happened, and all you heard about was the Red Sox and the World Series and how great it was, you know, for the city to come back and turn around from that. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's great. And I'm a huge sports fan. As far as I'm concerned, Boston's comeback that began at 2:51. That day, the day the bombs went off, when all the police started running up the streets to Our um, EMS, exactly the EMS yes, to help out the, the to help out the victims and to keep everyone cool. Um, and not only that, it continued. It continued down onto Calm Ave, right? When you had all the first responders up on Boylston Street, the runners helping the other runners out with um, with uh, the health and making sure that everyone was. You know, okay. in good shape, and it continued the next day. It continued the next day when, you know, you had people like my nieces and nephews and their friends volunteering to help the Richards family raise money, um, you know, to remember their son that died. And it continued when the hundreds of things that went on that kind of flew under the radar, and it, it peaks next month. It peaks next month. But the, the definition of Boston Stars, all that little stuff that happened. All right. Well, thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you for your time, <laughs> Sheila. I appreciate it. All right. And... Hugs and kisses and we're Hugs and kisses, always. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> Thank you. Yep.